I'm Jose Cavalieri. I'm lead consultant architect for multi-cloud and automations in ITQ. And today here with me, I have my colleague. Hi, I'm Michael. Um, I'm an automation architect at ITQ. And today we're going to talk about how you can get started with Tanzu Kubernetes Grid, proof of concept in your enterprise or in your company. So Jose, let's kick it off. Yes, let's kick it off. Just to make sure this light board session, we will not go over Tanzu Community Edition, okay? So for that, we would like to draw here a little bit line. So we know that we are going to talk specifically for your organization and for proof of concept about some products for Tanzu portfolio. Indeed. So which products are them, Mikael? Indeed, on the right hand side here, we have uh, vSphere with Tanzu or TK. GS, Tanzu Kubernetes Grid Service. And the other product is Tanzu Kubernetes Grid Multicloud, eh? or TKGM for short, right, Jose? Perfect. All right, so every time we are in the customers, they always come with the first question for that solution. Jose, how is the license model? So, Mikael, can you tell us a little bit about how the license works? Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. So, both editions, they require a license, eh? and Tanzu is actually being offered in Tanzu editions, right? Um, you, they range from Tanzu Basic up until Standard, I believe, and all the way to Advanced. The further down you go through that license edition or Tanzu edition, the more features you get and the more features you can enable and integrate, for example, with TKG, eh? Tanzu Kubernetes Grid. Perfect, perfect. So, as a license is a subject by itself, we would like you to invite your technical account manager or solution team from VMware, or also ITQ can help you to decide which license is better for your use case, okay? Which brings us to the next session, which is about flexibility. So, Mikael, can you please tell me what are the difference or flexibility from both products? Yes, indeed. So when we think about uh, flexibility, um, we think about, hey, on which platform can we deploy the solutions? And uh, we think about certain limitations. So let's get started with vSphere with Tanzu or TKGS. Um, this can only be deployed, for example, to vSphere. Eh? So only to vSphere. So we, in general, say that this solution might be eh, less flexible. Also with TKGS or vSphere with Tanzu, there are some certain limitations that apply when you, for example, integrate it with NSX ALB. Limitations that do not exist, for example, yet in TKGM. So that means uh, for us, in our experience, we believe that this solution is more opinionated compared to TKGM, I believe. So Jose, can you tell a bit more about the flexibility of TKGM? Yes, yeah, so if one solution is a little bit less flexible, of course, the other one is going to receive a plus sign here. The reason we assign a plus sign here is that we can also do in a vSphere environment, the same as TKGS, but TKGM also allow us multi-cloud. Mm -hmm. So let's say in short, public <coughs> clouds, okay? And then you can run TKGM there. So you can have a cross clouds platform for tons of solution for this specific solution, okay? And a little bit more that we see here, as one is a bit more opinionated from development community, this is a little bit less opinionated, mm. okay? Yeah, maybe something important to point out is that VMware aims eh, to deliver a native Kubernetes experience as much as possible with both solutions, right? I forgot to say that. Yeah, both yeah. solutions, yeah. Uh, yeah. drawbacks and positives, but both are exactly uh, good solutions. So, which brings me to the next topic of our table. How is the target audience for both solutions, Mikael? Can you explain a yes. little bit in TKGS? Yes, indeed. So in vSphere with Tanzu, eh, there's a tight integration with vSphere. So this solution might be ideal, for example, for the vSphere administrators. Eh? And why is that? Well, simply because they get a lot of visibility in vCenter. So you can really manage your Tanzu Kubernetes grid environment from vCenter. This also means that in our experience, eh, based on our customers, that the TKGS solutions require actually only novice eh, case knowledge or above. Voilà. Let me quickly write this down. Voilà. How does that look on your side, eh, Jose? So for us in TKGM, uh, we don't have the same view in vSphere as TKGS. So here we consider a little bit as a black box, right? Why we say that is because there is where we recommend more for infrastructure up, guys, and here would be more for persons that are more development mindset in Kubernetes. So 
People don't see here more than a VM, but not the pods. Mm -hmm. But here is also about where we need more knowledge in Kubernetes. So more knowledge is more required for TKGM than TKGS. Yes, and it's, so it's important to point out that, for example, for the uh, vSphere admin or the infrastructure admin, the TKGM solution might appear indeed more as a black, uh, as a black box. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, good. Bringing us to almost to the end of this Lightboard session, we would like to talk a little bit about the installation scenario. Mm -hmm. So, Mikael, how is the install looks like in TKGS? Well, in vSphere with Tanzer, the install is actually quite uh, simple. Uh, it's on vCenter. You just need to enable uh, workload management. Voila. Um, basically, your vCenter is actually your kind of bootstrap machine uh, and will launch the installation for TKGS in the vCenter environment. Mm -hmm. How does that compare to TKGM, Jose? Looking to the same thing, mm -hmm. we need a bootstrap. Okay, so Bootstrap is going to be used to be installing Bootstrap, sorry, and also a little bit of CLI. So in this case, it's a do it yourself. So you can prepare your laptop, you can prepare your doc image to be able to do the Bootstrap, where there in TKGS is our vCenter that does the work for us. Mm -hmm. And bringing me to the last part of the, our session is about the requirements, Mikael. What are the requirements that we need to install both solutions? Mm, yes. So looking at vSphere with Tanzu, we of course uh, will be installing it on vSphere. So I would say uh, you at least need vSphere eh, 7 and we would advise update 2 or above. Why is that? Then you can, for example, eh, integrate it also with NSX ALB later on. Eh. We will talk uh, in another Lightboard session about the NSX ALB integration with, for example, TKGS and TKGM. So we hope to see you eh, there. Another requirement that you need in the vSphere infrastructure, let me quickly draw this line so that it hopefully becomes a bit more clear for you that we're talking about eh, requirements. We at least need three ASXi hosts in our cluster. Eh? Voilà, I will write here quickly for you ASXi, three or more ASXi hosts. We also need to enable DRS and of course in uh, preferably in fully automated mode and also HA. Voilà, high availability needs to be enabled on our cluster. We also need vSphere storage profiles. Eh? Voilà. And why is that? Uh, the storage profiles will determine where our Tanzu Kubernetes cluster nodes will be running on, so aka on which data store or on which data store cluster. And they can also be used, for example, with persistent volumes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. and last but not least, we also need a content library. Yeah? And the content library is actually used uh, by vSphere with Tanzu um, to uh, deploy the uh, OVA files from. So the Tanzu Kubernetes release files, the OVA files, are in the content library. And vSphere with Tanzu will consume them to deploy your Tanzu Kubernetes cluster nodes, for example. And before I go uh, or continue, we also recommend to work with at least three or more networks. More on that later in our next Lightboard session. So how does that look, Jose, for TKGM? So taking up the same approach as Mikhail took for the table, we need a little bit lighter requirement for TKGM. So actually we would need a vSphere, if we talk about vSphere of course, mm -hmm. about 6.7 update 3. We need only two ASXIs for the high availability, okay, ASXI. And also something like we said, Storage profiles are exactly the same, so we can use for the persistent volumes there. DRS HA does not play a role here, okay? So Kubernetes will be in control for their pods to be apart. And networks, we also recommend three, sorry for the little uh, tight here, but we also recommend three networks for the TKGM solution, which we will be talking in the next light board. So, that's it. How do we start for your organization a proof of concept between TKGS or TKGM Tanzu Solutions? And I hope that you have enjoyed this video and keep up with us in the next Lightboard session where we are going to be talking about NSXLB. So thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you get notified of our new Lightboard session videos. And we hope to see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.